All right, so I can see that we are live on Zoom and we have our first attendees. Welcome everyone to our webinar from another series of subject webinars. And uh, as you already know, today we will be talking about studying business administration in Germany. So this is kind of our umbrella topic for today. And my name is Georgi, who will be with you today, uh, mostly behind the scenes, because we have lots of interesting guests today and I will give the floor totally to them. I will not uh, introduce myself that uh, who is behind the webinar, et cetera, et cetera. But so instead of that, I will jump into the presentation quickly. But before I do that, uh, uh, some small technical details for the attendees. You can see the Q&A button in the bottom part of your Zoom interface. So this is the main communication line that we can use with you guys. So you can send in your questions there using the Q&A button throughout the whole webinar. It is already open. And then I will be monitoring what's going on there. And towards the end, we will have live Q&A session with our guests where your questions will be voiced and you will get uh, a direct answers from the representatives of this or that program. All right, so also keep an eye on the chat, by the way, despite the fact that you cannot use the chat, uh, keep an eye on the chat because I will be sharing some important interesting information and maybe our guests will do the same also. Uh, let me now share with you the screen, quickly go through the agenda uh, for you, and then we can start. So uh, according to agenda, first we have uh, guests from BBB uh, Hochschule, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Robert Dust and Daniela Wolf, who will be talking about, who will present um, Master of Science level program in International Technology Transfer Management. Then uh, we will move to tomorrow University of Applied Sciences and we have uh, Dr. Thomas Wunge, who will be talking about professional master sustainability, entrepreneurship and technology. Then we will move to CBS International Business School and we have Julia Balzan who will be talking about Master of Science level program in international business. And then we will close with Hochschule Fresenius, um, with Mr. Frederick Mibach, who will be talking also about Master of uh, Master of Arts uh, level program in international business management. So, uh, as I said, no words for me, and let's move now to uh, BBV Hochschule, University of Applied Sciences, and um, let me give the floor to Professor Dust and to uh, Daniela. So, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah. I would like to introduce to you our university, BBW, University of Applied Sciences. And um, first of all, I would like to start with a general overview. And afterwards, I will give the floor to the professor of um, ITTM. So give me a little second, I will share the presentation and then we can start. So here we are. Yeah, so as I mentioned, welcome to BBW University of Applied Sciences. And we are located in Germany, Berlin. And um, in general, we offer 22 industry oriented study programs. And therefore, we cooperate with around 200 industry partners. Um, currently, our, um, around 1,200 students are enrolled. And we have around 400 international students. So we are aware of their concerns and needs and um, we have a really international atmosphere. Um, we have two branch campus. Um, now we will focus on the Berlin, uh, the Berlin one and the other one is pretty new in uh, Venice, Italy. What is really, really important for you is that we are, of course, we are state recognized. So the degree is the same as in every other university and you can continue your academic career or you can jump into the job market. So um, that is, um, yeah, that's guaranteed. That is a short list about our most famous study courses, the English language ones. And today we are talking about the master's program International Technology Transfer Management. Um, some course information to give you a short overview. We have two intakes. For a summer semester, that is the 1st of April, and for a winter semester, that is the 1st of October each year. So we have the normal summer terms and winter terms. Our official application deadlines are the mid of February and mid of August mid of February for the summer semester, mid of August for the winter semester. 
And of course, we are a private university and therefore we are really flexible. And if you have any challenges, just talk with us and we can talk about um, the deadline because yes, we can adjust um, very quickly. Um, the period of admission, now it's the, the admission period for the next summer term. It's between November and February. And for the next winter term, 2023, for example, that is from May to August. And of course we have scholarships, just I have to say for our enrolled students, and um, of, co of course, because we are a practice oriented university, um, we offer internships. Um, just um, a short list about your benefits, because um, what you can expect from our university is definitely, uh, for example, small study groups. So your study will uh, really intense. Um, and the, the, the seminars and the modules are guaranteed, um, you will have definitely a really personal and close support given by the academic support by the professors, the kind of all-around support given by the international office, and so on and so on. Um, yeah, it's more and more, of course, we have an, our own career service center, and um, yeah, we have an own uh, job portal, um, and our enrolled students have free access to this and so on and so on. So just to mention some of them, to highlight some of them and uh, because it's, um, yeah, you, you know what you can expect from our university. The main admission requirements are, of course, for these um, master course is the university entrance qualification and um, you will need a good English language um, or an English language certificate. And um, that is the level B2. And um, this certificate should not be older than two years. And unfortunately, it's not sufficient. If you studied in English, um, you will need this official English language certificate. And now I would like to give the floor to our professor, um, Professor Dust, and he will introduce to you this um, master degree course, International Technology Transfer Management. Please, it's yours. Your yeah, floor. thank you very much, Daniela. So hello to everybody. My name is Robert Dust, and I'm responsible for the study program of International Technology Transfer Management. Well, that's a really long title, and maybe it's not easy to understand what that means because it's not a conventional uh, or the, historical name of a study program, but you will find out there's really a huge need for um, students or uh, young uh, engineers being qualified in technology transfer, because and that's what you can see on this slide already, that in society and economy, there's a lot of changes in the last year. Uh, I'm in a generation, we had no smartphones, we just had nine needle printers, so maybe not know what that is. But you can see that the, the progress in technologies is increasing, increasing, increasing faster, faster, and innovation cycles are increasing. And you can see what will be the next uh, technologies which are required by, by the society and economies. Think about uh, 3D printing, which leads to absolutely new business models. Uh, you can see the glasses, the uh, current discussion is about electromobility. Maybe some of you understand that, uh, recognize that as the Emerson echo on the slide. So we have a lot of mega trends leading to the requirement of new technologies, and there should be someone offering this technology. And uh, you can see the, the, the current business models is about collaborations, is about uh, combinations. If you look to your smartphone, which maybe is in front of you, it started to be a mobile phone. And now what's today, it's a, it's a camera, it's an organizer. Yeah, it's, it's a navigation system. So the, the combination of uh, technologies is also increasing and leads to new products and new business models. So we have to think about how to share these technologies or how to move the technologies from one side to the, to the other. And that's what we will see on the next slide that um, if you could please change, thank you. Um, there is a source uh, where technologies are coming from. Yeah, so we can call them. You can see them on the left side: technology generator, yeah, or seller, however you would would like to, to name them. And mostly, it's universities, it's research institutes, or startups. 
but could also be a sharing of technology between developed countries and developing countries. So a lot of technologies has to be moved to the sink. So to someone who's using the technologies or is combining the technologies and the, and the products and your business models, or maybe uh, you share them uh, if you're in a governmental organization, you share technologies to other countries, help other countries, which is also included uh, in these uh, study program. So how to get the technologies available on one side to the other side, which are the users or the applicants of a technology. And that's what we call technology transfer. So technology has to move from one side to the other. And for that, we need special methods and tools. Most of them are project management, but we also need a lot of uh, ITTM managers. ITTM stands for International Technology Transfer Managers. Uh, today in the industry, you would say it's a product manager, like something like, yeah, so um, there's a lot. What, is, what has to be moved if we look to the objects? Sure, first there are product and, and process technologies. Uh, as you know, you know maybe that the, the display in your in your uh, iPhone, if you're an owner of an iPhone, is from the competitor Samsung. So Samsung is offering a technology, a product technology to Apple to the competitors, so they can use this technology for these beautiful products. But there are also good services, software and data. Think about digitalization. Clever algorithms uh, have to be shared. Look to to the Google platforms, the Amazon platforms, where you can use software and data in your products or patents and licenses, or humans. Humans are also carriers of technologies. So if you hire someone uh, which is really has a high knowledge or expertise in a technology and you hire them in your company, that's also technology transfer. So you could say maybe it's also something with HR. Uh, if you go a level deeper, so asking uh, on the next slide, uh, what will be um, the, the skills or what are the competencies uh, we will teach you in, uh, at the BBW University? Uh, it's about controlling such a process of technology transfer from the beginning to the end. What means from the beginning? From the beginning means there is someone having ideas, maybe some very creative people generating new ideas, building first prototypes, testing them, uh, then uh, developing products based on these technologies, producing these technologies or uh, products, offering them to customers, and last but not least, the commercialization. Because uh, if you have a new technology and you're a company, you want to make money, profit. So this is a very long lasting process, a long life cycle, including a lot of innovation cycles from the first idea to the commercialization, working with very many different departments, development departments, sales, marketing, production, and all have their own views on the technologies. And there should be someone combining them along the life cycle. So let's talk about the competencies. At the end, it's a project. Yeah? So there are a lot of project management expertise uh, required for managing such a huge and complex product in this area of innovations. Uh, you will learn a lot of uh, analytical and structured skills, how to manage that the project, what are the processes, there are a lot of required tools, and especially a cross-functional and I would say also a cross-sectoral uh, expertise. So you will work, as I mentioned already, with a lot of different departments, with a lot of different branches. So uh, you could uh, work with a combination of uh, consumer electronic in automotive industry, or medical industry combined with food industry or whatever. So a lot of different uh, branches have to grow together and not work as silos, uh, as you know, maybe from the past. If we talk about cross-functional projects or if we talk about international projects, we also talk about intercultural skills. So myself, I'm German, half Danish. So just uh, talking about the Danish and the German uh, cultures already, a difference inside of Europe. Now imagine uh, that uh, you have to work with people from Japan or work with people from uh, Africa, from America, and it's not just another language. So maybe we all talk English, uh, but uh, they work in another way. They have other methodologies, another understanding of collaboration. So we'll also talk a lot about that. And that leads to the last, um, yeah, let's say, aspect of international 
uh, transfer management, a lot of soft skills working together with many, many people. So if you love to, to work with people, yeah, uh, at the human factor, uh, then ITTM uh, would be a very interesting program. And that leads to the last slide. So what is what offers international technology transfer uh, management is really it's a combination of a lot of different innovations and technologies and management skills, uh, managing very, very transfer uh, complex international uh, national pro projects and uh, understand all these technologies, not in detail, you will work together with specialists, which are really, really deep inside the knowledge of the technology. But combining different technologies to new products, that's very interesting. And as I mentioned already, an understanding of all these different cultural aspects, as soft skills, communication, conflict management, also sometimes included in such a project. So it's a very broad and a very complex study program where you will look in, in each uh, edge of, of uh, yeah, let's say, technology. Yeah. So that's from my side. Um, I hope appreciate that the program. I would uh, and we would appreciate if you could welcome you at the BBW University in Berlin. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Dust. Um, last but not least, this is just a short summary um, regarding the hard facts. So it always starts in winter and summer semester. It's a full time study course, of course, and the duration of four semesters. You have the full ECTS uh, credit points. And yeah, the, um, you can pay by um, semester installments. So what we want to say is, uh, is that um, it, is, it is a challenge. Uh, it is really tough to pay the whole amount in advance. So we offer to pay in installments um, that you have the chance to split it. And we have an application fee of 150 euros for um, yeah checking your documents and uh, we are pretty fast and that is the advantage uh, for example for a private or in a private university yeah so just that you know just we want to inform you about just try out we offer taster lectures that you get a deeper impression of our lectures we have a monthly international information event we um, offer or otherwise uh, chat with our uni bodies. So um, on our website, our students would like to chat with you to answer questions regarding the study courses, courses, um, how to live in Berlin, and so on and so on. And last but not least, of course, we offer a personal and individual student counseling. And just call us, write us, or chat with us. And um, then you have a face-to-face -face conversation and it's more individual. Yeah, so as Professor Dust mentioned, uh, we are really happy to, to meet you, to answer your questions. And um, these are our contacts, uh, for example. And um, yeah, that's it for the moment. Um, picture from our graduation ceremony. So we like to celebrate um, your um, the finish or if you um, success, successfully finished your study course, of course, you will start your study with the known welcome days. And uh, for now, thanks for listening and thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniela. Thank you very much, Professor Dust, uh, for a very nice presentation. Just a quick note to the attendees who have just joined or, and uh, couldn't know about the Q&A button, uh, how it works. So. In the bottom part of Zoom interface, you can see the Q&A button where you can send in your questions. And I see your questions already. I'm just not answering them because we will address them soon because we have three more presentations, which all each 15 minutes, which means that in around 40, 45 minutes, we will get back to your questions and we will address them. No worries. So stay tuned. And now we will move to our next presenter. We are moving to uh, tomorrow University of Applied Sciences. Uh, it's Thomas, uh, Dr. Thomas Funke. Sorry for that. Yes, That's no problem. Thank you very much, Chaji. Yeah, the floor is yours. The, na the name is not so important because it's about the degree program. So, um, yeah, my name is Thomas, Thomas Funke. I'm the founding president of Tomorrow University of Applied Sciences, which is a newly established university 
in uh, in Germany, which uh, is located in the heart of Germany, which is in Hessen. And uh, we do offer bachelor degrees, um, but also since two years already a master's degree. Um, and this is the one that I would like to introduce to you, a professional master in um, entrepreneurship, sustainability and technology. And uh, it is actually quite a different learning experience. It's a remote first degree and we're using technology to actually make learning more effective. Uh, and in many regards, this degree um, follows principles of modern learning design, uh, sciences. For example, what we do is we strongly focus on challenge-based learning. We all know that uh, us humans, we're facing big, big challenges in the 21st century. And uh, we need people above all to actually solve them, um, starting from climate change, biodiversity loss, but then also making our cities uh, and communities safer, more resilient. And all of these are things that need skills of the 21st century, that need change makers. And this is uh, our mission at Tomorrow University. What we do, we want to empower the change maker to actually drive change, to not just critically understand and question the status quo, but actually have the tools, the mindset to drive change. And this is uh, what I would like to quickly introduce to you in the next 15 minutes, how we do that in a master's degree that we actually do offer in partnership with one of the leading German speaking universities It's located in Austria. It's the Vienna University of Business and Economics, uh, which is ranked uh, uh, constantly top five when it comes to research in the German speaking world, but also in international rankings like Financial Times and others, they're always top 50. So we're really, really happy to be partnering with, re with, with regards to that degree with the Vienna University. We are at Kumara University. We focus really on challenge-based learning and using technology to make learning more effective. So that partnership is uh, a really nice one uh, because you have academia, academia, academic excellence with uh, super researchers from Vienna and at the same time, a very, very strong practitioners network um, that are also serving as lecturers or as challenge owners in, uh, in that degree. So this is about VU Vienna. Um, I quickly introduced them already, a beautiful university. The degree itself is double accredited, equus at AACSB. So meaning that it's valid in Europe and then also in the US. Um, prerequisites are a three-year working experience, um, but then also English proficiency, which will be tested in the admission interview with the Dean herself, um, and then also a bachelor's degree that needs to be uh, completed beforehand. There are certain exceptions made. Uh, if you don't need the, the work experience, for example, or if you don't have the bachelor's, there's something called the genius paragraph. Certain amount of students can also be enrolled if you don't meet these uh, criteria. But these are all things I don't want to bore you with the, with that in the next 15 minutes. Really more exciting is actually the learning experience. And uh, what we did is uh, during the pandemic, we all saw that uh, most of the education as we know it doesn't really work as it should. Um, and uh, that's why we started from scratch to actually develop a competency framework uh, where we said, this is actually what everybody needs in the 21st century to thrive. Um, and this is what everybody needs to actually not just thrive, but change the world for the better. And one of the things that you get in most of the degrees, hopefully at every university is cognitive proficiency, be, meaning being able to think critical. We all need that in times of information overflow. We need to be able to derive meaning from uh, lots of data to actually make or yeah, lead by facts. Uh, and this is one of the, the big competencies that you actually get in that degree. Um, then a bit unusual for a business degree because it's uh, Vienna University and we are focused uh, on, on business and uh, uh, yeah, technology is that you also dive deep into the tech part, meaning that you will learn how to code in Python. You'll actually build AI models, uh, but no worries. We'll take you from where you are. We won't make you in that degree a software engineer or a data engineer. So roughly 85% of the learners are uh, coming in there with uh, without prerequisites when it comes to coding. But this is incredibly important because it's in, yeah not, not enough to only understand the, the bigger impact of technology, but to actually understand the mechanics of technology. That's why we say technological literacy is, in, is incredibly important for everyone out there. The degree itself also serves kind of as an academic incubator. So self-empowerment is written in capital letters. So you start the degree with a challenge, which is called mission identification, where you question your values, define your personal mission, but then also feedback other personal missions to actually grow and have kind of the basis for your entire learning journey. And then the next two big pillars are entrepreneurship and sustainability. 
So we all know that if we keep on doing how we're currently doing the things, uh, climate change will kick in really, really fast. And uh, that's one of the things. So we, we need people that are changing this. And these are the entrepreneurs, but not only you need the mindset of an entrepreneur, but you actually need the tools and the, the way how entrepreneurs actually think in solutions to solve the big problems that we're all facing. And that's why sustainability and entrepreneurship actually have the very same color code um, that's, that's on purpose, because we believe it's not enough to only understand the most important principles about sustainability. For example, like the circularity principles, the SDGs and all of that, you need to be able to act upon that as an entrepreneur or as an intrapreneur. So it's not only about starting your business, it's also about transforming existing businesses. And our alumni from that uh, degree, so currently it's the seventh cohort, which is actually starting next week. They work for companies like Tesla. They work for companies like uh, Nike, but then also scale-ups like Tier Mobility, Personio. Uh, so that's the people that actually also change companies from within. And then last but not least, it's a degree which is strongly focused on working with others. So there's a strong social learning, but also social intelligence focus. So collaboration, feedbacking, leading, communicating, uh, that's one of the things that is uh, strongly emphasized with one challenge, for example, only focusing on responsible leadership, as an example. The curriculum looks like that. In total, it's a 12-month degree that can be extended up to 18 months. So it's quite flexibly. So if, for example, if you want to make a break for one challenge, you can. That's why the duration is 12 to 18 months. It's divided into four phases. So you're starting out to the orientation phase where you have a deep dive into the competencies that are just introduced, mission identification, that's self-empowerment, building your dream team, that's social intelligence. And then after you've had that three-month orientation phase, you actually go into the three pillars, sustainability, entrepreneurship, and tech. And here you can already specialize based on your interests, based on your needs. For example, in entrepreneurship, you could go more in the direction of strategy and finance. This would be that track. Or more in the direction of product development. Sustainability, you could go more in the direction of climate science or more in the direction of responsible leadership. Um, that's totally up to you. You can make that choice already in phase two. The elevation phase, which is the third phase, that, that are challenges which are derived from the SDGs. We have wonderful partners providing challenges. Not sure if you know Plan A. They're having a carbon accounting software, one of the, the hottest startups actually uh, in, in Germany, located in Berlin. Um, and that carbon accounting uh, uh, software that they're, they're now developing is also supposed to go into the financial market. So you'll be designing a go-to-market strategy with them. Or uh, we have DPD as a company, the large logistics company. Uh, they provided us with all the parcel delivery data in Hamburg. Um, and what they want to find out is in order to reduce CO2 emissions of the entire fleet by 40% by 2025, they need better AI, AI algorithms to actually navigate their drivers. And that's a challenge here in sustainable cities and communities uh, that you could take, but you could also work on your own startup ideas. Uh, this is what happens very often. One team, for example, developed uh, yeah, a very, very cool idea with regards to tracking uh, the CO2 footprint of fruit and vegetables. So this is very much about developing solutions. And then in the last phase, the activation phase, this is the lab. This is a eight to 10 week, very intense and structured process where you can validate business ideas, transform an existing uh, idea or business actually here in the corporate lab. It, uh, it ends with the title of a master, but uh, for some also with their own startup or for others also with the transformation uh, within an existing company. And what we always try to do, we make learning as practical as possible, and we love comparing that to a muscle. So it's not about three weeks learning and then having an exam. It's constantly applying, applying what you have learned. So you understand a certain concept, you apply it in a challenge, you create a solution, but you always constantly feedback others. And this is actually what we know since 30 years, learning sciences, uh, scientists have told us that learning works best, that this is how we memorize, this is how we really build out and grow our competencies best. And in detail, that looks like that. This is, for example, ethics and economics of AI. You have a bigger, bigger problem that you're supposed to solve in that one challenge, and that is broken down into milestones. Um, and then for every milestone, we have in our learning technology, actually, um, knowledge that we provide you uh, and you can decentrally wherever, whenever you want to access this knowledge through an app. Um, and then for every milestone, there's submissions, there's challenge discussions and feedback sessions. 
Um, and this is kind of transforming the way how learning works. It's not only sitting in the lecture hall, listening to one uh, very smart person. It's actually applying your knowledge and challenge discussions. It's based on this principle of active learning, where you get things out of your head, not only into your head. Um, yeah, that's happening at least once a week, 90 minutes, very intense discussion formats that we offer, uh, which are guided by the professors from the Vienna, but also at some point, uh, practitioners that are actually challenge owners. For example, the product development challenge is owned by the head of product uh, of N26, the large uh, neobank that some of you may know. Uh, yeah, and that's a wonderful example. Another example of an, an elevation challenge um, where you get a large data set, uh, which was published recently, I think, in Nature. Um, and then the task is in the first milestone to understand the data, but then also to derive an investment thesis and actually pitch that to investors. So it combines entrepreneurship, sustainability and tech. And one of the um, teams, interestingly, went in there. They were totally overwhelmed at first by the data set because it's a challenge. But then they were guided by data scientists, uh, data scientists. They were helped that they discovered coffee as being the second biggest producer of CO2 after red meat in the food industry. Then they said, well, we need to change the production process because there's a, one cherry, which is actually composed of 75% of waste because only two beans uh, can be one out of that one cherry and everything else is uh, thrown away, but we can't change the production process. So why don't we, with our marketing skills, actually develop a label that uh, puts the smaller coffee producers on stage that already follow circularity principles? And then they pitched that to investors from Hightech Gründerfonds, Holzbring Ventures, that was organized, that was the last step of the challenge. And then the investors actually said, if you, if you strive to do that, then we can bring you to our investment committee and you may get pre-seed funding. And that's a challenge as an example that wonderfully combines the three big pillars, sustainability, entrepreneurship, and tech. It's a very structured process. You're helped and guided. But within this process, you have a lot of freedom to actually develop solutions that are meaningful to you and that are meaningful to our world. And uh, that's just to give you a very tangible example of one of the challenges. To sum it up, um, there are three things which you, you should definitely make a check mark or where you should tick the box, whether you like uh, things or whether you like the program, whether you like the learning experience. The one thing is full focus on challenge-based learning, meaning that uh, there are modules. These modules are composed of challenges. You're constantly challenged, meaning that you're constantly a bit out of your comfort zone in a guided way, in a guided way. You constantly apply uh, daily learning nuggets will actually help you to succeed more. Um, so it's not this very focused learning of three weeks and then having that exam. Um, it's really challenge based learning. That's the full focus. The second thing that you need to like is very yeah self-managed learning. We have uh, cohort based learning. So you're starting in cohorts of 15 to 25 learners. But nevertheless, you can manage your own schedule. We, had, we do provide you help, but a lot of people love that, that love flexibility, that don't want to be at university for three to four days in a row, but that actually can flexibly design their own schedule. That's the, that's the second thing. Um, and we additionally also offer a lot of meetups every three months, at least where the big community meets uh, in several hubs uh, around the globe. Um, then there are yeah, learning hubs that you can also access where you can learn from. So there's definitely a lot of possibility to meet, mingle physically as well. Uh, it's remote first, the degree, but there is a big chance to actually meet and mingle and build an incredibly strong network. And that's the thing that I'm most proud of is the community of learners. There's really people from around the world in this degree that uh, couldn't be more different, that couldn't be more diverse, uh, not only in terms of nationality, ethnicity, but also in terms of their ambitions. We have people that want to replace plastics as a packaging, packaging material for good. We have others that want to transform their small startups to a more sustainable one. We have others that are saying this business model of time versus money is not mine. I want to change. So really, really great minds that are in that program, all like ourselves with a bit of a naive uh, wish to change the world for the better. But that's actually what makes it so beautiful, uh, incredibly rich community. And yeah, we try to enrich this community with people uh, from the practitioner's world, successful founders, but not only that, but people that are experts in their, their fields. Paul, for example, he was the former uh, head of market research at Twitter. We have the founder of Ecosia, the Ecosia that constantly supports. So there's many, many great people in the community. And uh, 
that I think uh, sums up my 15 minutes that I had, but I only have a, a couple of more information, more technical things. So um, the early bird application deadline, in case you are interested, is already on the 6th of uh, December. Total tuition fee of the master's program is 24,000, but as said, with the early bird, you get a deduction of 3,000 euros. And then there's several scholarships that you can also have a look at at our webpage, which is tomorrow.university, where you actually see several scholarships that offer you support up to 7,000 euro. The next cohort already starts in March. Uh, so application is open. Uh, and the next one, which is actually not true, the current one is starting next week. And then the one after that is starting uh, end of March. So that's uh, the most important facts and figures uh, about the program. And uh, if there are any questions, I'm very, very happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Dr. Funke, for a wonderful presentation. And yeah, there are questions, but we'll address them very soon. Uh, as I told to the attendees, um, we will have a live Q&A session very soon in around half an hour maximum. So, and then we will ask all the questions and I'm monitoring them in the Q&A. So thank you very much. And let's now move to our next speaker. And we are moving to um, CBS International Business School. And we have Julia Balzan, who will be talking about Master of Arts level program in international business. So uh, Julia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Very nice to meet you today. Um, yeah, I will share my screen first of all. I think you can see my presentation now. So. Yes. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Julia. Uh, Julia Balsan, I am a study advisor on the campus in Cologne. And uh, actually, I also came as an international student to Germany. I'm originally from Italy. So if you also have questions about how it is to live in Germany as an international student, I'm sure I can answer all of your questions. So um, first of all, a couple of um, facts about how it is to, to study in Germany. I'm sure you already know how it is for you and all the benefits you will have when you study here. First of all, we have here in Germany, uh, international accredited uh, degrees and one of the largest economy in Europe. You will also have a lot of job opportunities and career prospects after your studies, and you will be able to stay here um, after graduating for 18 more months, uh, thanks to the post-study uh, visa. We are located in the heart of Europe so that you can also travel to different countries while you are here. And um, for example, if we compare living expenses in Germany, we have relatively low living costs, uh, for example, um, compared to England or USA or Canada. We also have very multicultural communities, especially in big cities like Berlin, Cologne, Frankfurt, and Munich. So here are a couple of facts about the CBS. Uh, our um, university is a private university of applied sciences and uh, was established in 1993. We have different study programs, uh, bachelor's, master's, and also MBA in the business and management area. We have over 3,000 euros, um, sorry, 3,000 students from all over the world. And our focuses are digitalization, sustainability, and entrepreneurship. We also have cooperations with more than 800 companies. Um, and our motto, our credo is creating tomorrow. We are internationally accredited by the FIBA, IA, CBE, and the German Science Council. And we are also one of the best universities of applied scientists for business studies in Germany in this year, and also the best digital learning provider uh, for this year. Here you can find our locations all over Germany. Our main campus is in Cologne, but we also have two other campuses for the full-time programs, which are in Mainz, which is close to Frankfurt, and in Potsdam, which is close to Berlin. We also have other um, campuses, but they are mostly for other um, study programs in German. 
Here you can find an overview of our master's uh, programs that we offer at the CVS. Here the English full-time programs. Um, you can find, of course, all the programs that we offer um, at the CVS on our website. Today is about our um, study program, the Master in International Business. But as you can see, we also have MBA and master programs in other um, subjects, of course, like digital marketing, financial management, global supply chain management, HRM and leadership, and so on. And we also offer study programs in German, also in very different topics. Here you can also find um, an overview of the study course plan. So a master at the CVS uh, takes four semesters, two years. So uh, you will have modules and classes about um, business uh, basics, where you will have the chance to gain knowledge in this field, like business and management. And then you will also have some program specific uh, modules, of course, about, for example, international business. Uh, you will also have this, you will see these gray areas are the soft skill trainings and foreign languages. Because for example, if you are an international student, you will be able to take a German course at the university, but also to train other skills, like for example, presentation skills or even negotiation and so on. So skills that will be very useful for you, especially when you were, mm, when you will look for a job here in Germany or maybe in other countries. A big part of the second semester is the business project where you will be able to work with your student fellow, uh, fellows with uh, a company together. So um, after I will also have an um, um, example of a business project we had a couple of years ago. Um, so it basically works like that, that a company uh, comes to you with a project, an idea, or maybe a problem that you would, they would like to solve, and you and your group and students will work on this project, and at the end of the semester, present this project in front of the management or maybe the CEO of the company. And it's a very good um, possibility for you in order to, to get, of course, uh, many connections with different companies, and maybe you never know, you will have the chance to maybe do an internship or maybe you will also get a job offer. Um, in the third semester, you will also do a business simulation game where you will work on your virtual a company and um, you will have to consider all the aspects that are important um, for your company in order to be successful. Uh, in the fourth semester, you will write your master thesis and there you have the chance to choose if you will write your master th thesis in cooperation with a company mm, during an internship or maybe abroad at a partner university. Here we can find a couple of facts about our program International Business. It is a full-time program. Here on the uh, right, you find a couple of hard facts. So you can start in the fall or spring intake means in August or January. We offer this study program in Cologne and in Potsdam. And um, it's completely in English. It's a full-time program so that at the end you will have 120 ECTS, so credit points, and you will have, as I already said, the business project, but you will also have elective courses and, as I said, the possibility to do an internship or a semester abroad. Um, this master will give you the possibility to get to learn subjects like business economics, corporate governance, or strategic analysis. And you will explore all the relevant international and economic contexts. You will also have the chance to put this uh, knowledge into practice, into practice with different projects, like, as I said, the business project, but also an experience lab and case studies with the business simulation game and also with the internship. 
As I said, here you can find an example of one of the business projects we had a couple of years ago. It was a project together with the DB, so with the Deutsche Bahn, um, and it was um, the project was the travel experience of the future. How does traveling look like in 2030? So the students had the the. Mm, at the project and uh, this project and they had to figure out how um, this old traveling by train will evolve in the next year. So the first part was more of a lecturer centered and they put this um, focus on innovation management and frameworks. And in the second part, the students had the possibility to also apply and put this uh, knowledge into practice and uh, prepare this presentation and this project so that they could they could present it in front of the management which are the um, requirements and uh, how does the application process look like? So the requirements for a master's degree is a first academic degree. That means a bachelor's or a diploma or a magister for a German um, university or um, recognized international university. Um, the final grade should be at least good and you should have at least 180 ECTS credit points, but our admission office, um, because I know in, not in every university you have this credit point system, so our admissions office will just check your um, documents and um, then tell you if you are eligible or not for the a master program. The degree should be business related, but as I said, even if you studied maybe um, something different or uh, if you're not sure if you can get accepted, you can just um, fill in your uh, our, our online application and send all the documents we need and we will prove it, uh, prove it for you. Um, you don't have to pay um, an application fee. So if you just want to send us your application so that the admissions office will check it, you can do it and it's for free. We also need a proof of uh, English language skills. The application documents are CV, um, the official academic transcript of records and your uh, certificate of academic degree, a letter of motivation, a copy of your passport or ID, a proof of English language skills, and here again the application deadlines uh, for non-EU um, students or applicants. It's um, now the 15th of May for the fall intake and the 15th of October next year for the spring intake. So why CBS? Um, these are our core values. So first of all, internationality. We have um, 75 different nationalities here on the campus and we have several international events also for our students here. We have, as already said, German language training and you have the possibility to spend a semester abroad. We have a hands-on mentality. So we have professors from within the economy that can also give you a lot of examples from the practice. We have business projects, simulation games and internships. And we also have a lot of networking events and student initiatives for you. Our uh, courses are very small. So um, between 15 and uh, 25 students. And uh, two very important aspects for us are, of course, um, team spirit and friendship. And um, also the interaction with the professors and with the fellow students is very easy. And you can get in, in touch with the, the professors very uh, fast and very easy. Our services on the campus, we have an international office that can also offer you personal um, advising sessions. Um, and we also have international clubs, body programs, and international events. We also have an accommodation office which 
will help you find accommodation here to find an accommodation here when you come to Germany. We also have a career service which will help you with um, individual career consultations, but also they can offer you application trainings and career events. We also have a job platform with uh, a lot of uh, job offers and they will help you with uh, network events too. We also have a student office, examination office, scheduling office, library, IT and cafeteria, of course. Here you can find our partner universities all over the world. Um, as I said, more than 160 university where you could spend uh, a semester. And also uh, a couple of our unforgettable events during the studies. Um, the, um, your studies here at the university will begin with an introduction week where you where we will have an official semester opening ceremony, but also an introduction week with a lot of um, very funny and interesting events for uh, you students. We also have trips for our students uh, during the years, and maybe I will say um, I would say the highlight of your studies it will be the graduation at the end. So thank you so much for your time, and yeah, if you have any question, I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Julia, uh, for a wonderful presentation. And yeah, we are getting close to the questions. Before we do that, uh, now let me introduce our last speaker for today. It is Frederick Mibach from Hochschule Fresenius. And you can see where it is located, quite in the uh, central location, geographical location of Germany, towards the south a bit. So he will talk about Master of Arts level program in international business management. And yeah, uh, Frederick, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Georgie. Okay, just quickly sharing my presentation and then we can get started. Okay, cool. I hope you can see my presentation. Um, yes, I hope we can. Every, okay, cool. Thank you. So thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much for giving me the, the, the chance to talk um, during this session here and introducing the, the master's program in international business management. Um, so welcome to Hochschule Fresenius. My name is Frederick Miebach. Just quickly giving you a brief introduction about myself. I'm the head of the international admissions office here at Hochschule Fresenius located in Cologne. Um, I studied here at Hochschule Fresenius, so I did my bachelor's and also my master's degree in international business management with a double degree in, in international business management, studying first year at Hochschule Fresenius and the second year at the University of Chester. Um, I also worked for, for Bayer in the past in, in, the, in the international HR department. I worked for RTL, for PwC, so different stations before I, I came back to Hochschule Fresenius um, to become the head of the, the international admissions office. Um, focusing on the International Admissions Office it's itself, so it's located in the heart of Cologne, so Media Park here in Cologne, and uh, we as the department are responsible for different campuses here in Germany, so we're responsible for Cologne, Düsseldorf, Hamburg, Munich, Berlin, and um, new campuses are already planned or in planning. Um, so they, these will be added to our portfolio as well. And we are responsible for supporting with the entire application process for international students. So from EU and non-EU countries, and also from Germany, uh, willing to study English speaking pro uh, study programs here at Hochschule Fresenius. So we support with any student services, we support with uh, the visa process, with housing, whatever you need in the process of coming to Germany and your willingness to study. Just a, a quick introduction or a general overview about Hochschule Fresenius. So we're offering over 173 years of education tradition. So um, Hochschule Fresenius was founded in 1848. We now offer approximately 120 bachelor's and master's programs. A few bachelor's and master's programs will be added next year. So 
Um, they're part of the, the accreditation process right now. So a few more English speaking programs that we will offer in the future. We have five departments in total. So the, the design AMD school here in Germany, we have business and media where international business management is, for example, located. We have biology and chemistry. We have health and, and social, and we have online plus. So also an online platform where you can study online. Currently, we have over 17,000 uh, students here at uh, Hochschule Fresenius and over 22,000 graduates. So looking at the winter semester 2022, so our recent intake, um, that was quite successful because we had an incoming rate of at least 10%. So uh, students from EU and non-EU countries coming to Germany and willing to study here at Hochschule Fresenius. And uh, another key fact is that we have over 500 cooperation partners. We had our career days just recently, so last week, where these companies came to the university and held presentations, introduced themselves to the students um, for internships, for, for student work at jobs, and um, many other things basically to, to get introduced to, to the student field. Um, focusing on the study program itself, so focusing on international business management, um, as you can see in brackets, it's masters of arts, but also a potential masters of science. So you have the option to study the first year at Hochschule Fresenius and the second year completely in Chester in the UK. It's a full-time master's program, which is four semesters in total, so two years in total, and it's offered in, uh, at the campuses in Berlin, in Cologne, and in Munich. Um, focusing on Munich, you have to say that it's not offer, offered in, in the summer semester. So in Munich, it's only the winter semester where we offer the study program. In Berlin and Cologne, it's the summer semester and the winter semester. The intakes that we have are always March and September, so the 1st of March and the 1st of September. You will gain 120 ECTS credit points in, in, at the end of the study program. And um, just mentioning briefly, once again, the, the double degree option that you have with a Master's of Science in Chester. For this, you would only have to write one dissertation or one master's thesis. So not two, not one for the first year and one for the second one. It's just one dissertation at the end, which you write in Chester, which you also write in collaboration with a company or can write it in, in collaboration with a company. Um, but this is not a must. Um, the price structure is here 880 euros monthly on a monthly basis and 950 euros um, monthly for non-EU students. Just quickly summarizing that. Showing you the study plan of the International Business Management Master's Program. So you have the first, second, third and fourth semester, basically. So the first two semesters, this is showing you the structure of the International Business Management course with or including the Chester option, but you also have the, the point list be listed below, which includes the non-Chester option. So in the first semester, international economics and international management, financial management, leadership and strategy. Um, second semester, a bit more the, the focus on marketing and sales, strategic management, international relations. And then once coming to the, the third semester, you can choose a, another major that you want to have as part of your master's. So you can choose either international business, international finance, marketing management, or global management. Global management is the, the Hochschule Fresenius option. The other three options are the, the majors that you can choose or, or pick in Chester, basically. And then in the last semester, you have your colloquium and you have your master's thesis. So basically, if you look at Chester, you have parts of the, the master's thesis, which is the, the research pr proposal or master's thesis proposal. So you write a proposal, hand that in, this is, this is part of the grade of the master's thesis. And if you decide when you're coming from an, uh, an EU or non-EU country, if you decide to come to Germany and are, are not willing to, to go to Chester, so you just want to stay in Germany, then we have the option of an internship, including the, the major or in, in global management. So this is the focus in, in the third semester then. So global management plus internship, and then the master's thesis in the, in the fourth semester of your studies. Focusing a bit more on the requirements for your university studies at Hochschule Fresenius. So the basic requirements are basically the, the, as also mentioned in the CBS presentation, I think it's always the same to have at least 180 credit point bachelor's program. Um, for us, we have at least, or it's necessary to have at least 60 ECTS points in the preceding bachelor's program. Um, in the field of management or in the field of business. So this is one of the requirements. The second requirement is that we 
um, put a high focus on the English language skills as well. So we look at a level, level of minimum B2. Um, and the minimum grade in the bachelor's looking at the German system is a 2.5. And the documents that you would need for admission are the bachelor's certificate, transcript of records, CV, English language certificate, the secondary school certificate, the German health insurance, and also a digital photo for the student ID. And the first step for checking your documents, so this is part of, of our department or my department, um, we only need the CV and the transcript of records to check your eligibility or to check your admission. And then focusing a bit more on the job perspective, so focusing on uh, the example of international business management, what will happen in the end? So once you finish your studies, what can you do? Um, that's, that's a question that many students ask. And that's where we, we, we see that this slide especially helps you to, to find out where to go or find the way to in, in, the, in the working field. So focusing on a, on a management perspective, you, know, you can go into self-employment or factory and production management, the example of human resource management, which I did for Bayer, for example, um, working as a recruiter or working as a manager in the human resource field, working in change management. This is everything that you can do in, in the human resources and, and recruiting field. Uh, marketing and sales, international sales manager. This is my current position. Um, you can work as a marketing manager, online marketing, social media campaigns, event manager. So different fields, controlling and production. You have a controller, accountant, lean production manager. And nowadays, this is also an option to, to do this all remote. So you have the option to do that um, in presence or remote. And these are basically the job perspectives that we see from a standpoint of the International Business Management Program. The application process, just simply um, mentioning that or briefly mentioning that, you can apply online via www.hs-fosenius.com slash application, upload as mentioned the bachelor's degree and your transcript of records and your, your CV basically to check the admission. Then we will check your documents and get back to you as quickly as possible. And for non-EU students, um, we have the requirement of a preliminary agreement and then in the last step, you will receive your study contract and we will support you in the entire visa process if you're coming from a non-EU country. Life on campus, just briefly sharing with you how um, or which activities we have on campus. So we have university days, um, we have summer festivals, we have winter festivals, we have the matriculation ceremony, which is a few days. Um, so a first week rally as well through the city of Cologne, Hamburg, Munich, Dusseldorf, Berlin. So many activities planned by the university itself. Um, that's the first week. We have a Fräse Cup, so a football cup for any one of you who's interested in, in sports or football. We have a, a football cup where different teams from or, or students form teams from different campuses and compete to win the Fräse Cup. Um, each semester, and then the highlight is the graduation ceremony, finishing your studies and taking your first step into your career life or your, your, your career path, basically. Guest speakers, so just briefly mentioning that from the perspective of the career days that we recently had, so companies like Vodafone, companies like DHL, Sky, um, Rewe, Zalando for clothing, for example, ProSieben, uh, television companies, um, mobile phone companies, basically, or, or telecommunication companies, Deutsche Bank, banks also joining in, um, supermarket chains. So a variety of companies coming to the university and introducing themselves um, to, to you as a student and helping you in finding an internship, a student job, a full-time job, part-time job, whatever you're looking for in the end. Then mentioning my five reasons of, of coming to the university, of coming to Hochschule Fresenius, as I did my bachelor's and master's here at Hochschule Fresenius, um, I needed a few reasons to come back or to start in the beginning. So first of all, the practical focus that we have the cooperation with numerous well-known companies uh, for whatever reason. So for projects, for dissertations, for internships, full-time jobs, student jobs. Um, so you, you can always go to our career services department and they will help you in finding a job or an internship or a support with any project you, you might have during the master's program. Um, the study conditions, reason number two. So we have small study groups, maximum 30 students. If we have, for example, 60 students, like we have that in, in Berlin for a course, 
um, then we have two cohorts. So basically two groups of 30 students and um, this will be taught on, on campus then. Then the qualified teaching staff, they come from, from companies, so they have practical experience. And um, then the last point on, on, on study conditions is the optimal framework conditions, so that this teaching method has been done for uh, many years now and that we have good experience with the um, teaching staff or lecturers that we had in the in, in recent years large site network so all over germany we're located as mentioned in the beginning as well um Düsseldorf, hamburg munich cologne um, berlin so many locations here in germany and new locations are planned for next year and the the year to year, years to come Additional services, our competence center and the international office at our, our site to, to advise you uh, with anything you need, basically in the visa process, housing, whatever support you need, we will be there for you. And the, the last reason is the internationality so that we offer, offer business excursions within Europe and also uh, New York City. The last excursion was South Africa, for example, where you can uh, collaborate or, or uh, cooperate basically with companies and get to know what they do in, in different fields and the high international focus and possibilities of semesters or years abroad like Chester, Shanghai, Malaysia, New York. So different locations you can uh, you can go to if if wanted or if if needed. <laughs> And yeah, that's basically my, my last slide for today. So thank you very much for, for joining this uh, session today and giving me the chance to talk about Hochschule Fresenius. Um, I'm happy to advise you. So whenever you have any questions, send me an email, give me a call. You have my telephone number listed. I'm not only re responsible for international business management, but also uh, so, so not only for the master's program, but also for the bachelor's program for tourism and event management, engineering and international management, international management, digital management, health economics and bioanalytical chemistry. So um, whatever question you might have, please feel free to contact me anytime. And then that was it basically from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frederick, for a quite comprehensive and informative uh, presentation. Now, uh, let me open the floor actually for the Q&A session. Thanks for those who already addressed several questions, quite a lot of questions, actually not the several ones in the chat. You made my life easier. Thank you for that. And now let's move to those open questions that are left. Um, let's start with this one. Hello, I have a general question to all programs. As I know, in Germany, not all previous degrees are recognized, especially if you graduated from the private university. So my question is the following. I want to study business administration in a private university because there are smaller classes and so on. But how do I know that my degree will be recognized in the USA, for example, degree from the USA? This is what they mean, maybe. If my private degree had H plus, H minus in Anabin, good that you already know about Anabin, actually, will, you, will your degree be also a question in, of doubt in other countries? Thank you. Uh, Maybe I can quickly address this question also uh, because I know this kind of uh, anabin related thing. So yeah, if it's H plus H, H minus, then it's not a clear cut case. I would suggest you to check the university itself and check the, your degree separately itself as, at the same time and then get in touch also with anabin and uh, with a program that you're interested in to see whether it's fine or not because my case was also the same. When I came to Germany, my university was also private. It was H plus H minus, and it was recognized without any problem. So um, yeah, this is the case where you should contact both parties to find out whether it is all right or not. Do our speakers would like to add something to that or we are fine? Yeah, I would, I would simply add that we once you have a degree that is listed in Anabin as H plus H minus, we send it to the Central Office for Foreign Education and they check the status basically if it's accredited or, or not. And um, from that, we, we make the decision. If it's H plus, it's clear. If it's H minus, unfortunately, also clear. <laughs> also clear. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. Then let's move uh, forward. Uh, do you have an option to freeze the acceptance to join in summer, despite the fact being accepting for winter semester? I think it was originally for uh, Daniela, but uh, yeah, you can also, everyone can address this question. Yeah, basically, I would say it's not really possible to freeze it. So either you apply for this or that semester. 
sorry mm -hmm. for that but it's um to make it clear yeah it's better to either okay. that or the other one yeah <laughs> okay clear yeah but on our side i mean we have four intakes a year and mm -hmm. you can apply and then you choose either one of the four intakes uh -huh. so. mm -hmm. it's a yearly uh, uh place or, or spot that you get okay you the spot great thank you very much Okay, maybe um, I can also. Um, yeah, cool. So, for for example, we had the, the the case that people applied, for example, for a semester and couldn't come to Germany because of the visa process and so on. So, in that that case, you can also postpone your arrival, and it's not a problem to maybe apply for one semester and then postpone it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. And Frederick, would you like to also add something from your side? Yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say as well. So it's always dependent of the visa situation or the the, the individual situation of the student. Um, so if you apply for the winter semester 2022, as this was the example, and then want to start in the in the summer semester, that's no problem to to postpone that. Um, but the sooner the better. So that makes the process a bit easier. Not doing that in the in the middle of the semester, but doing that at the start of the semester. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, everyone, for your answers. Let's move forward. Is it possible to have a full-time job and study at the same time? Um, so your student visa, if you need visa, let me put it this way, you cannot legally be employed full-time uh, as a student, in, in, uh, I mean, from non-EU countries especially. So you have an opportunity to do part-time job, 20 hours per week uh, for 240 days and full-time for 420 days per year. When you will receive your uh, Aufenthals title, you will see also to that blood and there it's clearly written what you can do with this. this. But uh, yeah, also I doubt really that you will have time for full-time job <laughs> alongside studies and my suggestion would be don't do it. Part-time is fine, but full-time, uh, no. <laughs> Just no, don't do it. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, sorry, I missed it. Do you have work experience as prerequisite? This is question for everyone. Let's start maybe with Julia. Yes, we only need the work experience for the MBA program. So if you want to, um, to apply for the MBA program, you need at least one year work experience. But on the other side, you need a bachelor certificate, um, for example. And this uh, could also be not business related. So if you study, for example, psychology, you can apply for an MBA program with one year work experience. And Julia, one question, because I've uh, many times I've heard it, that yes. sometimes experience is required after you have completed your bachelor. Is it also mm -hmm. a must there or during the bachelor experience also counts? Um, I think it depends how many hours uh, it, it was. Like at the end, it should be like one year experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think in that case, we will just prove the, the case individually. Okay. Okay, clear. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Funke, would you like to add something? Yes. So for the master's degree that I just introduced, there's a three-year uh, work experience needed um, because it falls in the ranks of professional education, just like the MBA. Um, so that's a three-year. But uh, the, the, the second thing is you can have, as we just also asked the question, that work experience also prior to the bachelor. Uh, for our bachelor degrees that we have, there is no work experience needed. And I just wanted to say on that full-time working versus full studying question, so the degrees that we offer are... Uh, to be uh, yeah, studied part-time, which means that it's 15 hours a week. And we actually have quite a few that have a full-time job uh, or a 75% job. Mm -hmm. Not saying that this is uh, uh, the best way to go, but there's definitely a, a lot that integrate the program into their, their daily life and work. Yeah, this is a really good point. Thank you very much, Dr. Funke. Of course, if the program is part-time, then you have physically time to work full-time. <laughs> but if it's also is full-time, it's, yeah, <laughs> I think it's a bit difficult. But thank you. This is a really good note. Thank you very much. Uh, Frederick? Yes, just quickly adding to that. So for the International Business Management Masters, there is no prerequisite of, of business experience or, or work experience in that case. Um, but it's always beneficial. So if we look at the ECTS, for example, if the minimum requirement of 60 ECTS is not uh, fulfilled, then we also look at the, the business experience and or, or, or work experience. Um, so that's always beneficial in that case for checking the admission. Okay, clear. This, this is really important information. Thank you very much, Frederick. And Daniela? 
Yeah, for ITTM uh, at BBW, it's not required to have this work experience in okay. general. Yeah. Short, and clear, and concise. Thank you very much, Daniela. Uh, let's move forward. Um, uh, question from Femi. Hello, I'm chatting from Nigeria. What are the requirements for admission and tuition fee? Also, do I have to open blocked account to get visa? So yeah, requirements. I think it was already addressed quite uh, comprehensively. And tuition fees also were addressed by each of the uh, by each of the speaker. But regarding the open blocked account to get visa. Yeah, this is one of the options because you have to prove so-called financial sustainability. For example, if you want to come to Germany with visa, then uh, opening blocked account, having a full-time full scholarship, for example, or uh, also have a Verpflichtungserklärung or declaration of commitment is one of the ways to prove your finances. And uh, just quickly, I will put in the chat the link where you can read about um, blocked account uh, uh, in, in, in as an article. And your second question, Femi, uh, regarding the IELTS, actually, I have so many questions regarding it. Maybe we could address it once for, one and for all. So do I need to write IELTS exams since I have been studying in English in my country from previous study? So if the person had an English uh, program, fully taught in English, or is from English speaking country, uh, so, in these cases, are these people exempt uh, from uh, the English level certificates? Because I, I saw some of the questions like this. Uh, Daniela, would you like to address this question? Yes, as I mentioned, unfortunately, it's not sufficient to study it, um, in English before. So we need an official English certificate. Yes, we mm -hmm. it's required. Okay. Yes. Okay, from BBW, we require it. Uh, from uh, Presenius, do we require it? Currently, no. In the future, yes. So we've made a few <laughs> bad experiences with just accepting the previous English studies. Um, so we now say IELTS, TOEFL, Duolingo, that uh, an official test is needed to prove that English is, um, is sufficient or a test with the university. So making a test with us interview to see the English requirements. Okay, clear. And Dr. Funke? Yeah, the, the English does not require a certificate or a test, but it, it is tested in the admission interview. So for everyone, there is a, an admission interview, and that's where the English proficiency is, te is tested. Okay, clear. Thank you. And Julia? Uh, so we need a proof of English skill. This could be, for example, a certificate. But we also accept, for example, um, as the participant asked, so for example, if the bachelor was in English, we can also accept it. And also if you, if they come from an um, English-speaking country or spent at least six months abroad in an English-speaking uh, country. But besides that, we will test um, the English level of every applicant um, within an interview with a native speaker and we if they don't have a certificate they can also take an english test with us which is for free mm -hmm. okay clear thank you very much um next question is uh, do you also require approval or check from student colleague constants so to whom this question was addressed i'm a bit confused because it's not mentioned but I think it was for Frederick because based on time, it was your presentation. I'm not sure. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, do any one of you require <laughs> any approval or check from student colleague Constanz? No, not from uh, student colleague Constanz. We have our own student colleague for the bachelor's programs. Um, but this always depends on the check that we make with, with Anabin in, in the end. Mm -hmm. So if it's if the, the recommendation is the student colleague, then we have our internal student colleague that we can offer, but nothing with Constance. Ours is located here in Cologne in, in Media Park. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Then we'll move forward. Uh, question from Achikbe. I have a, a higher national diploma in marketing with 2.6 out of 4 CGPA four years program, which is also equivalent to Bachelor of Science here in Nigeria. Can I apply directly for my masters, and the second question was already addressed. So yeah, we can ask this, uh, answer this. Uh, can they apply directly uh, to the master with this kind of uh, diploma? Uh, let's start maybe with Frederick, with whom we have just finished. 
always apply. So we can look at that. Um, we can <laughs> look at the transcript. We can look at the, the CV in com combination with um, the, the grades. So that's basically what we look at. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that easy to say, okay, 2.6 and we accept you. We need to look at the credits as well, um, the work experience, everything in co combination to admit basically. So yep. always apply. Fair enough. Uh, Dr. Funke? Yeah, same thing. <laughs> okay. If you're interested, there is, and I briefly mentioned that there is, uh, since we're collaborating with the VO Vienna, the Vienna University of Business and Economics, the, in the Austrian law, there's something called the genius paragraph that allows you to also enroll in the master without a bachelor's in very, very certain circumstances, which is if you have enough work experience, if you pr prove extracurricular learning beforehand. So there's a, a chance, roughly 5% of every cohort can be accepted according that to that program. It's an exception made by the dean. Okay, that, that's really interesting. Genius yeah. paragraph you said, right? That's that's how it's called, yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Julia, would you like to add something to that? Same here. So Same. just apply and uh, the admissions office will check your degrees and transcripts. Yeah. Great, and Daniela? Same, totally same, the same. Okay, great. Okay, the questions uh, keep coming and this makes me worried, but let me, uh, because we don't have enough time, but let me see. Um, does the uh, question from advice, uh, does the university offer scholarships to finance business degrees? Is there any scholarship as an alternative to block account? Uh, yeah, I will put in the link uh, in the chat, the link uh, to the scholarships alternative that you could use in addition to blocked account, some kind of these kind of general scholarships in Germany. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to ask maybe Julia to address if you have any specific scholarship from. Um, yes. So uh, maybe I, um, I I think I forgot to tell uh, during my presentation that the tuition fee for a non AU student is around 7,000 euros per semester. And um, a lot of international students also get a scholarship of uh, 3,000 euro um, and yes so they just have to um, to have for example good grades and uh, write a good motivation letter they don't have to apply separately for it and we also have country promotions and again they will get so students will get again a discount of around 2,000 euro from the total fees. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I see that Daniela and Dr. Funke are answering questions. Maybe Frederick, before they are doing this, you could uh, reply to, to our question. Okay, sure. Um, so currently we do not offer scholarships. So we have the Deutschland Stipendium, Germany Stipendium and uh, scholarships from DAD, but we don't have any internal scholarships. This will change in 2023. So for then we have scholarships planned that we offer. Um, also for for best bachelors, best masters. So depending on the on the grades as well, and depending on the application criteria. But uh, we will add a few scholarships that we offer internally for international students and also national students, basically. Okay. okay. So for yes. for us, just uh, I, I briefly mentioned that there is a, a super early bird, uh, which is three thousand euro of the tuition fee that is until the sixth of December, and uh, then additionally we have three types of scholarships which are worth seven thousand euros. One is called the Entrepreneurs for Tomorrow Scholarship if you aim to build a venture, for example. Another one is called the Global Diversity Scholarship where it's about promoting uh, diversity on the globe, promoting global citizenship. Um, and then there's the growth mindset scholarship, where it's really about you and, and us supporting you in the learning journey. So there is different scholarships available. Okay. Okay, clear. Thank you very much. And Daniela, would you like to add? Yeah, we offer scholarships for our enrolled students, for example, Deutschland Stipendium, but not for interested students. Yes. Okay, yes, and more information regarding the scholarships like DAD, Deutschland Stipendium, or other from uh, from other German public foundations, you can find in the chat, there's a link for that. There's a specific question for, for Julia, for CBS. I just want to understand more. I saw that you had a conversation with this person. So because I, because I still am a student in the last stage and I will complete the first semester next February. So my question is, shall I apply only the first semester grades at the beginning of application? Okay, I, I have to admit, I really, I, 
didn't really understand the, the question. So I, I, I think it was like, can I already apply even if I'm still in my bachelor? So yes, as you can apply anytime, even if you're still studying, um, the what, what you have to um, upload with your documents are the transcript of grades and records. So the um, most important thing for us is to just have the bachelor degree before you uh, write your exams, for example, so that we know that you're ready, that you finished your studies. So, and if you want to apply, you just have to upload all the transcripts. So, in the transcripts, you always have all the exams. So, that's the important mm -hmm. thing. Okay, amazing. Great, thank you. There's a question from Adesian. I can uh, answer this from Michael. I have 2.96 in my higher national diploma. Can I apply for master? As our guests say, told you just apply and then they will see. 2.96 looks fine, uh, sounds good, but there are much more things to consider. So just apply and then you'll get an answer from our guests um, after they check your application. Uh, so there's next question from Julius. I live here already in Stuttgart, in Germany and work full-time in Stuttgart region. Is it possible for me to study Bachelor of Science program full-time online? If no, is there any provision for a hybrid study system? So who would like to address this question? <laughs> Okay, maybe I could start. We are mostly of a present university, so we have our lectures here. You can also take part, uh, participate online, but it's like only a passive participation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I would uh, like to greet this answer, but um, we offer, in addition, I would like to mention that we um, that we offer hybrid um, study courses depending on the pandemic situation and not on the personal situation of students. So I'm sorry for that, but it's more a hybrid if it's needed regarding the yeah, pandemic situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Dr. Funke, you would like, we wanted to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say that our bachelor programs are fully remote. The three that we have, responsible entrepreneurship, artificial intelligence and sustainable society, um, uh, technologies, and then product management. And you can study them from everywhere in the world. So you, you wouldn't have to be in Germany necessarily, but you can do that from Stuttgart, certainly. Okay, that's great. And uh, Frederik? Yeah, just as briefly mentioned in my, my presentation was Online Plus. So that's a platform that we offer where you can study completely online, but we are also mainly a, a presence university. So the, the majority of our courses are offered in presence, but we also have the Online Plus offers. But I think, I'm not 100% sure, these are only German programs, but English-speaking programs will also be added for next year um, in, in the Online Plus field. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Frederick. And there was a question, two questions, two more questions I would like to address, and I put it in the chat. So I will uh, read it for, out for Julia because it's a really long question. And I, I promise that I will read this question. So... Um, Hello, I hope you are an excellent health and spirit. I'm 54, BA of English translation and interpretation, compiler and translator of some books to and from English and Persian, MA of cultural management and planning, an international journalist analyst with 26 years of work experience, now the editor in chief of Asia and Pacific News at Iranian National News Agency. Very eager to continue my education in English while I learning German at PhD or once again at MA level there at CBS International Business School. But I would like to enjoy your advice to see which format of study you suggest. While I do not have any source of income there is there in Cologne or Potsdam, Berlin, while my son is also studying engineering in Bad Honef. As I noticed... Okay. It's it's not over yet. Oh. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, as I noticed, the dual format of study there at CBAs is free as the expenses are covered by relevant companies or organizations, but the programs are not taught in English. Do you have any suggestion? Is the announced tuition fee of 5,310 euros for four semesters or 4,650 for two semesters of MBA or over 8,000 for MBA fast track for the whole program or for each semester. As a BA of English language from the top university in Iran, should I submit and a proof of language proficiency of IELTS or TOEFL? 
So yes. yes, it was a long question. I... <laughs> it was a long question. So I am um, just adding the um, the link to our tuition fee overview. So mm -hmm. there, it's maybe a, a bit easier. So um, the first thing I would say, the MBA program is maybe the best fit because it it is uh, really for for students who would like to study um business and management even if they don't have a first academic degree with um in a business area mm -hmm. and with work experience so i think this would be the better choice the other thing is no income this could be a problem but we have a lot of possibilities and opportunities to finance your studies so um, we could um, maybe if you're interested in it schedule an appointment for a um, personal consultation where we will talk about financing options um, and the uh, fees that uh, you will see on the website and in the overview are mostly the fees per semester mm -hmm. okay Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Julia. And one more question, that promised question to Daniela. I have completed my master's in environmental science in 2005. And after that, I have also completed a doctoral degree in environmental management. Can I apply for a master's in business administration this summer semester 2023? Same, same answer. Unfortunately, please just apply and we will check it. <laughs> so sorry for that, but it's not easy to say yes or no. That's true. That's completely true. I agree with Daniela 100%. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, and I, I, I will call it a day. Sorry, sorry, our guests and attendees. I'm doing my best. I know I'm angering my guests now, but it's, I'm doing it for you. Uh, can student apply to for apply? Can I can a student apply with two years bachelor and two years master? Um, so, uh, Dr. Funke, I, I see you want to answer this question. <laughs> no, I wanted to give you a thumbs up. We're, I'm, I'm not angry at you, so I think you're doing a really good <laughs> job. But uh, as said previously, if, if I understood it correctly, two years bachelor and two years master, there's the genius. It, so it's not a completed bachelor. Yeah. Uh, this is how it sounds like. Then there is the genius paragraph, which is this 5% exception. Um, mm -hmm. But if it's a completed bachelor, it's a different thing. That's a prerequisite, actually, for the master. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and uh, there was a question, but I will quickly address it. I got admission already uh, and I've applied for a student visa, but at, as a German embassy in Pakistan replied, it will take a year to receive an appointment for visa, which is quite a lot, actually. I will miss the admission letter that I received because of the long period of time for visa. What can I do to get visa earlier? So yeah, this is a visa issue. Akurban, thanks for your question, is really huge problem. One year is crazy. I mean, when I was seeing three months, it's all already a lot, but one year. So, yeah, uh, I cannot tell you exactly what to do in this case with German embassies there, but keep them in, in touch with them, keep in touch with the program you applied for, and then you will find out what to do. But if you are more interested in, in general, uh, generally in uh, general processing times or visa regulations please visit our uh, there's two divisions of articles where we talk about visa different types of visa also take into account that might be that you have an opportunity for student applicant visa and i'm addressing everyone now because student visa is always a problem so if you would like to apply for one of the universities where you need visa for example um, then student applicant visa might be also a choice for you because in some countries uh, German embassies do give this opportunity um, so okay Dr. Thomas one more question for you and we are done because there's a specific question for you I see your name I'm a student in Ghana and I have a GPA of 3.25 and I wish to apply to continue my study in Germany how would be able to do that okay Dr. Thomas for Dr. Thomas it might be a difficult question because it's super super general question I would like to tell you go to my German university search uh, look at the study finder or look at the programs art uh, links that I've just published, the programs that are now presenting, and then they always uh, very clearly explain, and during the presentations also explain how you should do to apply. Just collect all the required documents and submit your application, and all will be fine then, as long as you meet the requirements. So this is super general question, Nettie. I couldn't give you a more precise answer, but yeah, if you want 
more precise answers, please do, drop me an email or to one of the programs uh, that you are interested in. Okay. Um, thank you very much <laughs> for your uh, patience and for your time. And also thank you very much, dear attendees. You got me into trouble today, but that's fine uh, by sending so many questions towards the end. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, uh, if you would like to leave us feedback for today's webinar, you can check out our Facebook or Google pages and leave us feedback. We always take them into account. And if you have any questions to our guests, of course, uh, please uh, get in touch with them. You can see that they are very eager to help you and ready to help you. I uh, dropped uh, their contact details as, as much as I could in the chat as well. And yeah, to our guests, thank you very much for wonderful presentations, uh, really comprehensive and informative ones. And also thank you very much for participating so actively in the live Q&A. That was a pleasure. And I hope to see you on our future webinars as well. And for now, I wish you a very good evening or good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you very much and take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you so much. Take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.